had two of you. This homework is so hard. It's too much. It's too much to do. Thanks, Bobo. If you had a kid, you would have to make a new one. You would have to make a new one. How do you do this? I would have to make a new one. What exactly is this? کلونی پس درست کردن یه چیزی از یه چیزی دیگه ببینی یعنیش هست که این دوتا چیزا یه دی این ای مثل هم دارن آها چقدر قشن The following three types of cloning technologies will be discussed. Recombinant DNA technology, reproductive cloning, therapeutic cloning. I really wish I could have help on cloning if I could only understand it better. If somebody were here to help me. Oh, Dr. Kaboot, is there any way you could explain to me the first type of cloning? Sure, I'll explain it to you. DNA cloning is the oldest form of cloning. DNA cloning began in the 1970s and is a common practice today in molecular biology labs. DNA cloning involves isolating a specific fragment of DNA and inserting it into a rapidly growing host, such as bacteria. The host then replicates the DNA fragment, resulting in the production of billions of copies of DNA in a short amount of time. DNA cloning has been used to create medications such as insulin, human growth hormone, and hepatitis B. It's not that I don't understand this, but is there any way you could explain it further so others could understand it? I will explain it to you in a chart. Hello, Mr. Hershkowitz. I'll be explaining DNA cloning to you in a very simple chart. DNA cloning is a technique used to reproduce DNA fragments. It can be achieved by two different approaches. The first approach, cell-based, while the second is using polymerase chain reaction, also known as PCR. In the cell-based approach, what we have is a vector. The vector is carrying the DNA fragment, so it is called the recombinant vector, into the host cell. If this recombinant vector is carrying the DNA fragment to reproduce like so, then we can also call it the cloning vector. The typical cloning vector, such as in this diagram, is a plasmid. A plasmid is a circular, double-stranded DNA molecule that exists in bacteria and in the nuclei of some eukaryotic cells. They can replicate independently of the host cell. Okay, so when we see the host has the plasma inside, we add antibiotics and poof, the host cell has the DNA fragments duplicated, as you can see in each one. However, when the host cell has no vector and antibiotics are added, no DNA fragments are made, and the whole cell dies. Doctor, I just don't understand this reproductive cloning. Can you please explain it to me? I will explain this to you in simple terms. Reproductive cloning occurs when scientists extract a cell from one animal, remove the nucleus from that cell, and insert a cell from another animal to give the first cell the DNA characteristics of the donor animal. Cell division is then manipulated by using chemicals or an electrical current. Once cell division begins, the cell is then placed into the womb of a surrogate animal. The surrogate animal hosts the cell as it grows and takes on the characteristics of the animal being cloned. And the cloned animal is delivered in a normal delivery. Now, Mr. Hirschquitz, I want you to explain to me what I just said. The following video is a presentation of reproductive cloning using the technique called somatic cell nuclear transfer. Okay, now doctor, I will explain it to you. You see, the white lamb in the corner donates a cell, and the black sheep over here also donates an egg cell. However, we extract the nucleus from the egg cell and replace it with the nucleus of the donor cell. The reason why we do this is so that the DNA will match the DNA of the white lamb in the top corner. Once this is done, they charge it with electricity so that it will start dividing. Over here, you could see there is the fused cell. However, once it's divided, it turns into here, which is a big embryo. And then we place it into the foster mother, which is 
any sheep really that's a female. And then after a couple months, it gives birth to the cloned lamb. The cloned lamb has the same DNA as the white lamb in the top left corner because we replaced the nucleus of the egg cell with the nucleus of the donor cell. This is why it looks exactly alike as the lamb in the top left corner. Cloned animals suffer from poor health and short lifespan. And it is an expensive process. 